I, I hate even having to talk about it, but yeah. uh, but um, my my friend uh, Jeff Burr uh, passed away. Yeah, and a lot of people will know Jeff's work because he did. Um, Gosh, he did Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, From a Whisper to a Scream. Um, Stepfather 2. Stepfather 2, Puppet Master 4 and 5, Night of the Scarecrow. Straight into Darkness. Eddie Presley, a, a ton of films. and But more importantly, and this is the thing that's been hard to to kind of get across to people, is, you know, I've been getting a lot of uh, of kind messages from people, but they're like, you know, I get it. You know, it's hard to lose somebody, you, you know, you look up to. And it's like, yeah, but I mean, I, I like ate dinner with the man yeah. several times. I met his mom. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and he was one of the few people that when I was really starting out, he had an impressive career and didn't think I was like a joke. Yeah. He was incredibly generous with his time. He watched every film I made. And also starred in, well, Well, uh, he was, he was, he appeared in the movie making out, which was a dream for me. Yeah. Because as a, you know, one of the things I hate about show business and about all this is that we compare ourselves to each other and we live in a paradigm now where you can make movies anywhere. Yeah. And a lot of the, the leaders in B movies are, are elsewhere. They're not in Los Angeles. So when you are admiring your B movie heroes who were all in LA cause they had to be, yeah. you're, you're thinking about like, man, their movies, they had like Forey Ackerman, or they had, you know, some, uh, you know, washed up guy from TV in it or whatever. And you're like, man, I never get to cast my heroes because they don't live in Dayton. Yeah. You know, Ohio or wherever you are. And I definitely think that's a silly thing, but I definitely think that a lot of us fall into that. And for me to be able to get Burr in my movie was like a huge win. No, that was awesome. To feel like, wow. And the fact that he was so excited to do it. And so funny. And it was funny. Oh, he was hilarious. Yeah. Uh, the, the uh, You know, the line he improvised that he asked me, he was Stank. like, do you mind if I try one on my own? And I was like, sure. And he was like, all right, l- listen, kid, I'm just a fat fuck who puddle- pedals pictures. That was the line <laughs> he made up. I'm just a fat fuck who puddles pictures. And uh, he loved the idea that I cast him as a producer who abuses his power. <laughs> he thought that was very funny. Because Jeff, you know, he dealt with that a lot. Yeah. And uh, I actually learned a story that I don't know if it's public knowledge or not, Mm. but when Eddie Presley was being made, which was Jeff's second personal epic, it was from A Whisper to a Scream, then Eddie Presley, then Straight into Darkness. When when he was making Eddie Presley, they'd raised some money, but it wasn't a big budget. Yeah. I mean, it was like 180 grand. I know that's a lot of money to me, too. But I'm just saying, like, for that era to make a movie in Hollywood on film, it's cheap. And they were ready to go three weeks till production. Dwayne Whitaker told me this. He stars in Eddie Presley and yeah. wrote it. Jeff got a call from, um, I think it was at that point, Dimension or New Lo- or uh, New World. But uh, they offered him straight up Hellraiser 3. Oh, wow. Like, straight up, they were like, we want you for Hellraiser 3. But if he said yes, yeah, Eddie Presley would have to be canceled, have to be canceled. or they'd have to find a new director yeah. or something. And Jeff just said, "No, nah, man, I'm already I'm already booked." And his payday from Hellraiser 3 would have been more than the budget oh, of Eddie yeah. Presley. Absolutely. And but that just that just is a testament to the kind of guy he is. Yeah. They had locations booked and actors counting on him and he was not going to let those people down and in my opinion, uh, he made a more influential movie, although it would have been cool for him to also have Hellraiser 3 on his resume. I would resume. have loved to have seen him do Hellraiser 3, yeah. But uh, instead it went to Anthony Hickox, who we also lost. Yeah, that's true, too. Like, just a week or two ago. Yeah, jeez. Um, but no, so, yeah, I, I miss the hell out of Jeff, and I'm still processing my grief on it, even though it's it's been, it's, it's been like five days. Yeah. It hasn't been long at all. No, it has not, unfortunately. And, but it, it sucks, and he, the thing I've enjoyed the most about grieving him is seeing so many people have similar stories. Yeah. It doesn't make me jealous. It makes me happy. Yeah. He was so, he was so, I'm going to put it this way because I feel like it really gets it across. He was so needlessly kind. Mm -hmm. There was absolutely no reason for him to be anything more than genial to anybody like me. And there were a lot of people like me who had stories about Jeff. I mean, one of my favorite things was I sat with Jeff at a convention once after the show. Yeah. And he told me, he was like, if you buy me a Bud Light and the and a cheap shot of, and a well whiskey, I yeah. think is what it was called. 
you know, well whiskey, cheap whiskey. He's like, if you get me a shot and a Bud Light, I will show you everything in my scrapbook. <laughs> so I went and, and I literally was like, I, uh, it's a, a well whiskey. I, I've never, I don't yeah. drink. So I had yeah. no idea what, what the terms were or anything. Fair enough, fair enough. So they got me, the, the bartender hooked me up and I had the drink and I brought it to Jeff and he busted open this incredible, um, incredible binder full of scraps from mostly from a whisper to a scream. Uh-huh. And Stepfather 2. Oh, wow. And he was like, yeah, babe, check this out. So when From a Whisper came out, back in those days, if you wanted to do PR, you had to hire a company. And their only job was to cut out references to your film in newspapers <laughs> and mail them to you. Yeah. He was like, they're just like these people in warehouses. I don't know if they were monkeys or something. <laughs> just, just, you know, just trained apes, just... Going through and cutting out every time from a whisper from to a scream was in there. And he's like, and it was amazing. And then you get this package in the mail that you paid a thousand bucks for to find out everybody thinks you suck. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would shit. That would be <laughs> shitty. Be real fucking shitty. Uh, but that was that was why he was such a great friend and and such a great resource for knowledge. Yeah. Because he <laughs> he had that mentality where he was like he was like, well, you know, uh. What was it? He used to say, I know it was a quote, but he used to say, well, you know, making films is a, is a horrible, a horrible, painful, time consuming, soul crushing, uh, vocation. And the only thing worse is not making movies. <laughs> and yeah, that tracks and he, that helped me a lot. Hearing stuff like that from somebody, I admired him greatly. Yeah. And th- the way I met him was just that I had to meet him because I was like, I got to meet the guy who not only did Leatherface, Texas Chainsaw 3, and Puppet Master 4 and 5, which were my first Puppet Master movies, but also Eddie Presley, which is a movie that completely changed my life. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but no, uh, one other th- memory I want to share, because I have a few, I, I'm very fortunate, I have memories with him that nobody else has. Yeah. Um. So when I went down to Georgia, I was looking for Soul to Steal. Mm-hmm. I was in a bind and I was really <laughs> behind. No, uh, make a deal. Yeah, yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Told you this one, huh? No, uh, but no, I went down to Georgia to see Jeff and to film his cameo in Making Out. Yeah. And first of all, he's the kind of guy that you drive down to film a cameo with him. He works for you for free all day. Yeah. And then refuses to not take you out to dinner. That's numero uno. That's great. But at the time, his his mother um, was very elderly Mm -hmm. and that was one of the reasons he was back in georgia that and he was just sick of los angeles yeah uh so we went to his house to his mother's house and she is just this sweet old lady and she her living room Mm -hmm. is nothing but posters from his movie that's amazing and it made me so happy because at that time burr couldn't have been 51 yeah and his elderly mom collected every and some of the posters were like you could tell she had them printed herself yeah and some of them were ones she'd found yeah. or gotten or whatever but she had like a shrine to all of jeff's accomplishments that's awesome that that is a special moment for me i'll never yeah. i'll never i'll never lose uh assuming no more head injuries yeah hopefully that uh i just wanted to share um he was a very, very cool guy from what you told me. Yeah, you never got wise. to meet him, did you? No, I never did. Well, the only chance you would have gotten was at Wasteland anyway. Yeah. And I th- yeah. Cause that was when he and I had, when I, I bought him a beer and he showed me the, the scrapbook. Yeah. And he was, he was always so kind. Um, but I'll tell you the last thing I want to say is when I met Jeff, I was in a crossroads in my life mm-hmm. that nobody knew about at the time where I kind of didn't want my career anymore. Yeah. I felt like uh, all my career had done was give me heartache. So I was like, I don't want to make movies anymore. I just want to like, I don't know. I think I wanted to drive a truck actually. And I never told Jeff this, Mm -hmm. but I was making, I was in the process of making a movie. My first personal epic movie called depression, the movie, Mm -hmm. a movie that I was doing without any concern for, um, you know, selling it. Yeah. uh, Any concern for any of that shit. I just wanted, I was just making it to make it because I felt so fed up with the process. Yeah. And I told Jeff right when we met, I was like, I'm actually in the process of making a movie that I would, I would consider my Eddie Presley. Mm-hmm. And he was, and he, he looked at me and he was like, 
it's scary. And I was like, yeah, it is. And he was like, and he just went like this. And he was like, well, you sold one copy. <laughs> and uh, then when I saw him next, the movie had just been completed. Yeah. And I gave him his copy in person. And he gave me a, he printed me a screenplay for Eddie Presley. Oh, wow. And signed it from Eddie to Depression the movie. <laughs> I remember you telling me that. Yeah. 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 So, but so, so then in typical Burr fashion, he got home from the convention and four days later, he watched the film. Yeah. 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 And he wrote me and he was like, So I got good news, I got bad news. I was like, okay. He was like, good news is, damn fine picture, really funny, really heartfelt, and the thing that's most important about this movie is no one else could have made this in the whole world except you. Yeah. And I was like, thank you. And he was like, that's the best compliment I could ever give. When you make a piece of art that nobody else could ever make, that's when you've truly done something special. Mm Mm-hmm. And I know, I know, it's like, oh, he's just he's uh, gest- gesticulating himself or whatever. Fuck off. Uh, <laughs> but but then he was like, I was like, well, what's the bad news, Jeff? And he was like, well, babe, uh, this is all you're ever going to do. Like, you're just going to keep making movies. <laughs> he was like, you're, once you've crossed that line where you've made a movie that was truly yours, you'll never stop. No going back. And he was completely right. Yeah. So, and we used to joke about, that was the kind of thing we would always joke about as like, as like, damn it, I'm sorry you're making another movie. Okay, well, <laughs> awesome, but sorry. Uh, also, I remember when we were done filming, uh, he was like, I'm pretty sure there was a performance in there somewhere that was good. And I was like, no, Jeff, I think it was good. He was like, oh, no, no, I know what's in there, babe. It's there. I gave you gold. You just got to mine it. <laughs> that was, yeah. that was, and he actually signed my Pumpkinhead 2 poster with that. That's so um, great. Uh, I gave you gold, babe. Now you got to mine it. So <laughs> I miss you, Jeff. Uh, a lot of people do. Uh, way too young. He way was 60. Young. Yeah. And way too young. And uh, honestly, it was very surreal to see the internet telling me about a friend's death. Mm-hmm. And I didn't recognize the sources, so I called him. Yeah. He obviously did not answer. Otherwise, yeah. this would be a much more interesting story. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so it was just very surreal. You know, we're at an age where our heroes are dying, but he was too fucking young. Yeah. So, but he has an amazing body of work. He left an amazing legacy with you and a bunch of other people as well. uh, No, he was an incredible filmmaker and he was, uh, he was highly underrated. Yes. Very. So, um, I've asked the listeners on weekly spooky this, so I'll ask you guys here on welcome to primetime this, it would be a personal favor to me if you guys during your week just watch a Jeff Burr movie. Yeah. For me. I don't care which one it is. No. It doesn't have to be Eddie Presley. It doesn't have to be his genius work. It could be uh, Johnny Misto, the kid's movie he made in Romania. Yeah. Or Texas Chainsaw 3 or what, whatever Night you like. Night of the like Scarecrow, a great Halloween movie. Night of the Scarecrow. Is it on Halloween? It's not. I don't it's, think fall. it's fall. It's fall. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I have a poster for it. Yep. That was actually, I'll tell you, that was actually when it hit me that he was gone. I was in here working. Mm-hmm. And uh, I have a studio and I have an office, and the office is also a studio. Yeah. <laughs> They're both recording studios. Yeah. And the office is where I do, like, heavier stuff, like Weekly Spooky and, and things like that, where I need, like, a really controlled environment and a mm-hmm. powerful computer. Sometimes I get sick of working in there, so I come in here to work because mm-hmm. uh, it's spacious and the dogs like to nap in here and stuff. And every time I sit down in here to work... Night of the Scarecrow posters right there. Yeah. And I didn't cry because I saw his movie and then whatever. I cried because I remembered what I always think when I look at that poster, which is every time we've recorded in here without, I mean, in, just in my own brain, mm-hmm. I've went, every time I look at the poster, I'm like, man, I cannot wait to go down to Dalton again and yeah. get him to sign that because he signed every poster of his I own. Yeah. Except that one, because I got it after the last time I saw him. Yeah. And that's what made me emotional, because it's like, because death doesn't just remind you that you miss, you're going to miss somebody. It reminds you that time is passing. Yeah. It's a multi-pronged pain um, of reality. It it tells you that you don't, that, you know, the the idea that we have a lot of time, that's an illusion. That's a lie we tell ourselves in order to feel okay. Yeah. But in reality, you know, tomorrow is not guaranteed. No, it's not. 
So with that all being said, when you lose a dear friend or a parent or a family member or whatever, and you realize that time is ticking by, that's when you need to look in the mirror, take a second, take a deep breath, look yourself square in the eyes in the mirror and ask yourself, do I argue with people on the internet enough? (laughs) Fair. So that rant that goes to Jeff. Um, Anybody, if you're listening to this, if you knew Jeff or knew of his work, uh, just know, uh, he, yeah, he's loved. Yes, he massively is. loved. Yeah, and we will miss him. And again, uh, like Henrik said, if you can watch a Jeff Burr film this week or even just in October, we all would appreciate it. Yeah, and and it'll make you happy too. I'm gonna watch Pumpkinhead too at some point this there, week. There you go, bud. Um, I feel like that one gives me ha- a fa- Halloween vibes. But now I'm gonna watch Night of the Scarecrow because you said that. Great one. Yo, you still have the out of print Blu-ray, you bastard. Of course I do because I'm a fan. I used to have it. Oh yeah. I borrowed it to somebody and I never got it back. <laughs> that was college. Wow. Yeah. I'm not, Hateful little bastard yeah. you are. 